Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapse version of a black leopard in soft pastel. If you enjoy this speedy version here then please do subscribe to me on YouTube but I'll also release a longer tutorial series from this piece over on my Patreon. I'm experimenting here with a new pastel paper, well, new to me, that is. It's UART 800, and you can see that it's the dark charcoal black colour. And I thought I would experiment with this colour for such a dark piece um, with all that black fur that I wanted to create. I thought it would make sense to start with a nice dark surface. So I begin with the background. You can see that I am applying more black because the paper isn't jet black and I really want to have some areas sing out with that dark contrast. So I'm working with a lot of black to begin with, creating the darkness of the jungle behind and then coming in with a range of mid-tone to dark vibrant greens. I'm doing lots of blending to soften the background and have it slightly out of focus behind the big cat. But the UART 800, I find this tricky to control. It blends very well, but almost too well. And I find that the colours went a little bit muddy after a very short time. It didn't accept as many layers as I'm used to on the other papers that I use. I regularly use Hannimal Velour, pastel matte paper, um, but probably the Fisher 400 is the most similar to the UART that I use. And I much prefer the blending capabilities of the Fisher 400, which is also quite a sandy paper. So the surface feels like a fine sandpaper. And of course, this one is the 800 grit. I've used UART 400 before, which is very similar to Fisher 400, of course. So the 800 grit in the UART is finer still, so you get a really smooth surface. It's possible to blend on this one without ruining your fingertips, which is nice. But for me, this paper just didn't hold enough layers and it didn't give me enough control over the blending that I wanted to do. And this was only in the background that I was discovering this. So it did make me a little bit worried for what was to come on the big cat with all of that lovely soft fur that I wanted to create. So at a very early stage of this painting, I knew I was in trouble because the lack of uh, blending control and the slightly more limited number of layers. Those were going to pose a problem when I was trying to create all of that soft fur. But I spent quite a long time on this background and I will make a full length detailed tutorial from this background. It took me a long time, mostly because of the scale of the painting. You can see that it's quite large at 24 inches wide. So there's really a lot of surface area to cover. So I'll go into lots more detail in the tutorial that will be dedicated to just the background. But this series will cover the whole cat as well. I will colour code parts of it, I'll narrate as much of it as possible to give you full guidance if you choose to paint along with me on this one. I want to talk a little bit about the cat as well. Of course, in fictional terms, we're used to hearing a black cat like this described as a panther. But of course, the panther is something fictional. And always when you're seeing a black cat like this, it's either going to be a black leopard or a black jaguar. 
And you'll see towards the end of this piece the spots that are barely visible on the body of the cat. And you can always see those spots underneath the coat in the right lighting. And that usually helps to determine whether it's a leopard or a jaguar. So in this case, I'm pretty sure that it's a black leopard. I took the photo reference for this, minus the jungle, as I did not travel to a jungle. This animal is in captivity. But I decided to add the jungle background just to give it a bit more of uh, the authentic feel of this animal's environment. Another issue that I had with the UART paper was that my usual darkest black, my hard new pastel stick, didn't look very dark on this paper. And the only thing that I have in my pastel collection that's darker than the new pastel is my Henri Rocher black. So I had to crack that one out. I haven't made use of it yet because normally the new pastel stick is dark enough. And it was really strange how it didn't go on, how it normally goes on on other papers on the UART 800. So I started making use of the black Rocher. And I'm almost scared to tell you how much I used of it because, of course, those pastels are not cheap. You can see a full review on the Henri Rochers here on my YouTube channel. I've got quite a few review videos as well. And also check out my videos on the blackest blacks because I did a whole experiment across all of the pastel brands um, to discover which are the blackest blacks. And that certainly came in very useful for this piece because I had to find another level of black to create the contrast that I wanted in this painting. But of course, you can see that it's not all black on the fur. I love the backlighting effect in the photo reference. So some areas of the fur are really catching the light. You can see down the right side of the face, we've got a very bright highlight. But of course, there's light reaching the rest of the cat too. And I'm using a mixture of dark purples, deep red earths, deep brown earths, and a very nice colour called Additional 18 from Unison. And that's actually a pink. So I know that the panther is a fictional thing, but I was a big fan of the pink panther in my childhood. And I wanted to challenge myself with this and see could I squeeze in as much pink throughout the fur as possible. Not really possible on the shadow parts of the cat, but you can see lots of the pink dotted through the areas that are catching the light. So I will talk about my colour choices lots throughout the main tutorial series. How to create the light and shade within what is essentially a lot of black fur. I'll show you how I lighten my photo reference at certain points of the painting so that I can see more detail within the fur. It helps me pick out more colour. Because although I'm going for a photorealistic effect, I'm always trying to add more colour and more interest in my marks. So that when you're up close to one of my paintings, it's very clear that it is a painting and you can really see the marks. 
But then it's really through the use of the colors that give that hyper-realistic effect when you stand back from the painting. A lot of that effect is really created using the colors. And that's why I talk so much about color in my tutorials. If that's something that you've been struggling with, then check out my full playlist here on YouTube, all about color theory. I talk about the basics, but then I actually give you lots of examples of how you can make use of it in your work. And that's something that I talk about throughout my longer tutorials on Patreon too. So lots of little highlights going on the face, especially on the right side where it's really catching the light. Much darker, more muted tones being used on the left side of the face, which is entirely in the shadows. So I'm constantly coming back in with my black Henri Rocher, darkening down that side of the face even further, and then actually using the Rocher on its side to block in larger sections of the body. And as you can imagine, because this is a slightly sanded paper, it really did eat that Henri Rocher. I think I used about half of the pastel, which is probably around 10 or 15 euros worth of pastel, just on the black. <laughs> but as I mentioned, that was really due to the UART 800 paper that I used. I just couldn't seem to get it to go black enough without using the Rocher. So if you were planning to work along with me on the tutorials for this one, I would highly recommend pastel matte. Even velour would be lovely for this. So you could experiment with a different paper. And if you do, and you post it online anywhere, make sure that you tag me. I'd love to see how you get on. And especially if you do end up experimenting with some different papers, I'd love to see how that turns out. It's unlikely that I'll paint this one again, but if I was painting it again, I think I would choose velour paper next time around. But it's good to experiment. I'm glad that I've tried this paper. I don't think that the paper is bad. It's just not great for fur, in my opinion. And the way I like to blend in my work doesn't really happen naturally on this paper. It is a bit of a struggle for me. But I might come back to this again for landscape or still life work, something where I'm not putting quite as much detail in, perhaps. So the finishing touches, it's usually the whiskers. And this was another awkward part of the portrait. Didn't really like how the pencil marks sweep onto the paper. And I really worked at some of the whiskers to strengthen them and make them a bit thicker. But overall, I enjoyed the piece and I learned a lot about this paper. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this here and that you'll subscribe to me on YouTube. And if you're interested in my longer tutorial series, then you can check out all the tutorials I have in my library at emmacolbertart.com. But thanks very much for watching this here, and until next time, happy pastling.